Tonight we have a story about a controversial treatment for cancer invented by a Winnipeg doctor. It's not new. In fact, Dr. John Davidson used it on hundreds of patients decades ago. What is new is that some 50 years after the doctor's death, more than half a century after his theories were dismissed as quackery, scientists are rekindling the flame of his research. With more on the legendary cancer doctor, here's CTV's medical specialist, Avis Favreau. His name was John Ralston Davidson, a respected family doctor in Winnipeg in the early 1900s. A great scientist, as well as a great doctor. And this is Leslie Gurney Bishop, now 88, a journalist who documented Dr. Davidson's controversial treatment for cancer. He never claimed that it cured it, but he said it would arrest it. Davidson spent years studying cancer, writing medical articles on his theories, which in hindsight were remarkable for his time. The doctor described cancer as a dietary deficiency, so he added generous amounts of vitamins to the patient's diet. But he also said it was critical to boost the patient's own defenses against cancer. Davidson took fertilized hen's eggs just nine days old and produced a powdered extract which was then injected into patients with various forms of terminal cancer. Like this boy, diagnosed with lymphatic cancer, notes show that with surgery, vitamins, and the extract, he returned to normal health. Over the years, Dr. Davidson treated hundreds of cancer patients. They all said, the ones I interviewed, all said that it had benefited them tremendously. Some said they were cured. Ruth Burke's father was one of Davidson's more famous patients. Harry Leader, the Member of Parliament for Portage La Prairie, had been diagnosed with terminal bowel cancer by the Mayo Clinic in the U.S. But under Davidson's treatment, he improved. It was controversial scientifically, but that really didn't affect Dad. He, he believed in it. But Davidson's medical colleagues thought the treatment was useless and repeatedly refused him research money. It's as though they'd been instructed by somebody, well, just uh, tear him up, you know, just tear him up. And they did. Frustrated with the lack of support, Harry Leader, with his own good health as proof, took Davidson's pleas for funding straight to Ottawa in 1944, directly to Prime Minister Mackenzie King. He never wanted any publicity from this. He simply wanted help for this man whom he felt could help humanity. The Prime Minister refused to fund Davidson's work. The doctor died four years later. He would die uh, pretty well of a broken heart, if you know what I mean, because he had not been recognized. His cancer treatment thought to have died with him. But then six years ago, the treatment was rediscovered by a Toronto company. It hired researchers at Dalhousie University to test the theory. Could these embryonic chicken cells really be a cancer treatment? When research began, there was excitement. Davidson's extract, in many ways, could be a cancer vaccine. In three studies on mice, the compound apparently shrunk tumors. We have to be careful about raising people's hopes falsely. Jonathan Blay is one of the researchers looking at Dr. Davidson's extract. Davidson's extract, in many ways, could be a cancer vaccine. There could be things in the extract that promote a response against the cancer. But then suddenly, the research stopped. The then owners of the extract had financial problems. They stopped paying the researchers. Dalhousie was out some $60,000 and halted the experiments. The university would be interested in continuing the work because the results were very promising. But for nearly five years now, the capsules have simply laid on the shelf. One could easily walk away from and say, to heck with it. But would we be leaving behind something that could potentially have significant impact for large numbers of people. But if there are no takers soon, the venture will die. A darn shame, says Dr. Bain, because we still won't have the answer. Was Dr. Davidson right? But if Dr. Davidson's extract does show the power to combat cancer... This could be not only one of the great human victories in overcoming disease, but it could also be one of the great human tragedies. A tragedy because for the last 50 years, a possible cancer treatment and its pioneer were forgotten. 
Avis Favreau, CTV News, Toronto.